Hello and welcome to Insiders, taking a closer look at your local community. We're partnering up with local cities to give you the inside look of some hidden gems. I'm here in the city of Fullerton. Let's get the inside scoop. Here to give us a more of an inside scoop, we have Corey Lance, who's going to give us a little bit more details about the Laguna Lake Park. Hi, my name is Corey Lance. I'm actually one of City of Fullerton's Parks and Recreation Supervisors, and we're really excited to have you all come out today and learn a little bit more about all the health and wellness initiatives that have been taking place citywide in Fullerton. There's been a lot of collaborative efforts over the years that really have allowed us to focus on different health and wellness programming in general. And through the pandemic, we've really realized that there is a huge need um, just through the social isolation and so many of our other needs from our community that have really made it clear that health and wellness programming really needs to be even more of a priority. So today we're here to show you around one of our one of our amazing parks here at Laguna Lake. Amy All, who's our city educator, is going to give you some wonderful information, talk about interconnectivity of all of our trail system throughout the city, and then later on hopefully be able to highlight some of our work with nonprofits, St. Jude, at Fullerton Collaborative, and also Cal State Fullerton. Awesome. Yeah, we're super excited to have you here and Amy as well. So let's get started. Welcome to The Insider. Today we're located in the beautiful Laguna Lake Park in the city of Fullerton. Now, what many don't know, this is actually a 20 acre lake full of so many things to give to its residents. Now here to give us an inside scoop of what else it has to give to its residents is Amy. Thank you so much, Amy, for joining us today. Hi, well, thank you for having me. It's a beautiful day to share our lake. Yes, it definitely <laughs> is. So Amy, tell me more about this lake. What is it so unique about it? Oh, well, Laguna Lake is just one of our great hidden treasures here in Fullerton. It's not a natural lake. It was actually a reservoir back in the old days of the Baston Cherry Ranch when all of the surrounding hills were covered with orange orchards, orange groves. And so this was a reservoir for the Baston Cherry Ranch, and then it's been a city park since 1952. Walking around the lake, you get all sorts of different vistas, different times of day. The, you can see the clouds changing at sunset. It's just breathtakingly beautiful with the sky and the water reflecting. So it's just a great oasis right here in our busy city lives. Now, what are some of the activities that the residents can enjoy here at the lake? Well, as you see, going around the lake, uh, walking is number one. Here at Laguna Lake, it's about three quarters of a mile around. So if you want to get some good exercise, go two or three times around. Uh, and then you can also use Laguna Lake Park as a starting point to visit some of our other trails in Fullerton. Some of our other trails are a little bit more strenuous. In fact, if you go on our city website, you can get some information about the different trails and they're, they're rated, you know, easy to moderate. It. and uh, you can also download a map and it can t tell you you know where's the best place to park and stop and uh, enjoy the trails it's also an active equestrian trail uh, mountain bikers love to go around the lake and it's a great place for people watching and dog watching and you might see around the lake uh, fishing too it is stocked uh, with fish throughout the year and um, you see a lot of recreational fishing going on you do need to have a license to do that well, yeah, I know. I definitely coming in here. The first thing that I saw were the ducks. Now tell me about some of the animals that are located here in the lake. Well, Laguna Lake is a, a place for migratory waterfowl to uh, winter or to, you know, take their breaks as they're migrating. And I always like to tell people, be very careful. Don't feed the animals. Okay. Don't feed the ducks, especially don't feed them white bread. People food makes them sick. They're supposed to hunt and forage and they do just fine. So enjoy them, but enjoy them from a distance. Now, aside from the beautiful Laguna Lake Park, there's some other treasures you might not know about. Here's Amy once again to give us more details about these treasures. 
Well, the hard thing was narrowing down the hidden treasures in Fullerton to just a small handful for this series. So we focused on Laguna Lake Park, as we already saw, Brea Dam Recreational Area, and then also Panorama Point Nature Preserve, some of our favorite places around here at Fullerton. And one of the neat things about our uh, trail system is that it can connect you to those places and many more along the scenic trails. Over 28 miles of scenic trails, all perfectly walkable here in Fullerton, will take you all the way out to Brea or out to the wilds of Buena Park, um, all in the trails like the one you see behind us now. And this trail here is really special because it is the Juanita Cook Trail and it's featured in one of our Fullerton on Foot uh, programs. This is a free guided walking tour program. There are guided videos online that you can find totally free and they're half hour to one hour walks that are designed to get people out and about getting healthy exercise and also learning about Fullerton. Yeah that's awesome. I think having a trail that you can pick and choose that's near you is great. Where could someone sign up for this? Oh go to our Fullerton website and find out all about Discover Fullerton on foot. Perfect, now you all know where you can start. Well, there you have it, folks. Thank you so much to Amy All and Corey Lance for giving us an inside of this beautiful Laguna Lake Park and all of the other hidden gems. Let's see what else this beautiful city has to offer. Thank you, Kim. I'm Brisa Colon here at the Fullerton Learning Farm located in the Fullerton Arboretum to learn more about the U-Acre project. And I'm here with some very special guests. Hi, I'm Mitzi Escobar. And I'm Amy Heil. Steve Anticona. Kayla McLaughlin. So what is the U-Acre project? And can you tell me a little bit of what it, does it stand for? Yeah, U-Acre is, stands for uh, Urban Agriculture Community-Based Research Experience. And this is basically where uh, students, undergraduates and graduate students come and uh, find their project and find out how they could give back to the community. And so all of you have a different passion. Can I learn a little bit more about your guys' passions and what got you involved in the U-Acre project? Honestly, I just found my passion in U-Acre by the fact that I could give back to the community and give them um, just healthy food. Um, it's unfortunate that there's many communities that don't have access to healthy, nutritious food. Um, so the fact that I was able to work with a, a big community, with a restaurant, with the Fullerton Arboretum and other students was just a cherry on top of it all. Um, it was just amazing to know that we could all come together from different backgrounds and just grow together, um, grow physical like food and then ultimately as individuals as well. So I'm super interested in the health aspects and the biological aspects. So one, to be able to provide the nutritious food like Mitzi was saying, and second is we all know that there's pests and we have to deal with them. And one of those things that um, farms and even home gardeners experience are things like rabbits. You know, what do you do when rabbits eat all your healthy food? Well, one of the things that um, I'm working on is um, how to repel rabbits by planting things like onions and garlic. So this Allium family is really strong scented. If you've ever cut an onion, then you'll know that you don't really like the immediate effects. But rabbits don't like it either. So right now I'm working to figure out and study ways that we can repel rabbits in a natural way that doesn't adversely affect our own health. I work with bees right now, we're part of the um, apiary. Uh, my interest mainly came from um, kind of like uh, trying to see what climate change can, uh, how, what kind of a problem it can pose uh, for urban food systems. Um, a lot of, some people raise bees in their, can, their garden, so there are things that we can do to help uh, the, uh, the health of a colony. That's awesome. What about you? I'm also part of the apiary team. I focus primarily on how climate change affects honeybees and what more we can do about it. So I really focus on bee grooming behavior and how best to implement that to attenuate the certain pests that have um, grown rampant throughout the world and actually devastates colonies every single year. So every year we lose probably 40 to 70 percent of our apiaries um, due to these varroa mites, which results in colony collapse disorder. Wow, that's all so amazing. Can I learn a little bit more about the mentorship program and your guys' partnership with the Monkey Business? Before COVID, we had young adults that um, work with Monkey Business Cafe, and they would uh, be out in the farm with us, uh, growing along with us in the sense of like uh, the lettuce, all the different kinds of produce that we uh, provide for Monkey Business. Um, and we, as college students, we just 
share that experience and how that is being a college student and uh, just build a genuine connection with them and just build a friendship with them and encourage them and um, show them everything that we have been doing throughout our lives as college students. That's amazing. And what impacts do you guys have on the community and help promote healthy eating? So one of the things that is becoming more popular is all these businesses on social media. We know that um, it's become an integral part over the past year especially. So we have our own um, Instagram. It's called CSUFU Acre. And um, there we, we post pictures of what we're up to in the Arboretum, like what we're growing. And usually this connects to monkey business. So they have their own Instagram where they'll post their recipe, their, what their, the meals they're making with the same produce that you saw just in the previous post on the farm. So these two entities together are really showing a full picture of farm, farm to fork produce. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm curious as a student at Cal State Fullerton, how can I help support, get involved and, you know, cheer you guys on? Like, how can I help? Um, it could just be as simple as um, trying to learn more about where your food comes from. Uh, it has to do a lot with the uh, support of local farmers, uh, sustainable practices. So just ask the right questions when you're at the supermarket or just trying to, not even like healthier choices, but also smarter ones. That's awesome. And I can't wait to learn more about all the monkey business happening in the city of Fullerton. Hello, we are here at the Monkey Business Cafe to learn more about CSUF's involvement in local businesses, the community, and nonprofit organizations. And I'm here with a very special guest. Hi, I'm Carissa Hart Benevith, Executive Director and Founder of Hart Community Homes and Monkey Business Cafe. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so excited to be here. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of the Monkey Business Cafe? So Heart, uh, Monkey Business Cafe is a project of Heart Community Homes, which was established in 1996. It provides residential treatment services to foster care youth. As the youth were, were um, emancipating from the system, it was hard for them to get jobs and work experience. So we opened Monkey Business Cafe to provide that workforce development. That is amazing. And we were able to talk to CSUF students with their partnership with U Acre and hear their perspective on this partnership. Can you tell me a little bit about Monkey Business's perspective on the partnership with U Acre? So our collaboration is very special. We're very lucky to have the Cal State Fullerton Arboretum and U Acre um, with the professor Sarah Johnson. They work close with our youth and we teach culinary agriculture and nutrition. That's amazing. And can you tell me how Monkey Business is promoting healthy eating in the community? So right now we are taking the produce we get from the farm and we implement it into recipes like our spring rolls that we're making right now. So this is the watermelon radish. It's pickled, that's why it's called, the color is like that. So that's how we're going to serve it. What is your favorite thing about working here? You know, my favorite thing about working here is like, you know, we help out the kids. We do, we help them with a, to get a better future, like how to get a job. We partner with the Fullerton Arboretum. So we get, I get to like experiment with the fresh products that they bring for, for us. What is one of your favorite fresh products that you like to work with? Actually, like we, the, the one that um, I just did earlier, it's the spring roll. I like the, the radish, the watermelon radish. It's a good flavor, so that's going to be one of the new products we're going to be using. Truck. And I'm here with a very special guest. Roy Reed, farm supervisor. Hi, Roy. So can you tell me, how long have you been a part of the Monkey Business Cafe? Um, approximately like 10 years. 10 years. Wow, that's a really long time. What is your favorite thing about the Monkey Business Cafe? 
Um, just loving coming here and getting the whole family feel, function, you know, getting a great bike to eat and just being around great people. That's amazing. And I understand you're also a mentor. What is it like being a mentor? Um, being a mentor is like being a big brother and just helping the boys um, just find their way in the future, just being prepared. Um, I love working with the, the youth that come here from different programs, from Heart Community Homes. Um, I love working with them, just seeing them progress and mature. Um, they get all the skills and um, I just love seeing their smiles and how they, when they first come here, as to oppose when they leave here, how much they've changed and matured and um, just learned so much just working here. I am here with another very special guest. Ivan. What is your role here at the Monkey Business Cafe? I am currently the food truck operator, but uh, I also wear many different hats. Uh, there's a lot that I, I help out in the cafe, with the food truck, with the uh, nonprofit that we have. And uh, so it's just pretty much wherever I'm needed, I'm able to kind of just jump in and uh, handle it. Yeah. That's amazing. And I understand the food truck is fairly new. Can you tell me a little bit more about the food truck? Yeah, yeah. We're definitely uh, trying to get that going again. We had to stop because of COVID, but uh, we're getting it up and running. Um, so our concept is basically taking stuff from U Acre Farms. Uh, developing new menu ideas, new items, recipes, and then uh, being able to incorporate that fresh produce and whatever they give us um, on the truck. Uh, right now we're working on the new menu. that We have a bunch of different produce that they're going to bring soon. And uh, we're going to have a lot of new recipes on the truck. Um, yeah. That's amazing. How long have you been here with Monkey Business? I have been working with Monkey Business for almost two years in July. And uh, the truck has been with us right around the same time so i got hired right as we got the truck yeah so i've been with the truck ever since we first got it that's amazing and what is your favorite part about monkey business who uh i would have to say being able to fill different hats uh because you know being doing one thing continuously drags on people sometimes and uh i used to be in the army so i'm a little bit more open to doing many more things because in the army is the same thing you're you're designated as a job, but really you're doing all kinds of things to be able to get the mission accomplished, you know. So it's kind of the same thing here. And that's why I feel like I just fit right in with everything. Um, and uh, like I said, we're, we're, we're kind of trying to get everything going up again. Uh, and that has to do with being adaptable, especially right now with this whole COVID and being able to adapt to different businesses closing. Because that's kind of what, what our thing was. We, we go to like breweries and bars and... Uh, different businesses, parking lots, establishments, but when everything closed down, that was, there went our food, food truck. Yeah, but like I said, we're, we're starting it up all over again. Yeah, that's amazing. And how would you describe monkey business to someone who might not know about it, like all of the behind the scenes aspects of it? It's definitely uh, a program that, that helps out the community a lot um, by taking in kids that are at risk of you know going into gangs or committing crimes or things of that nature uh we're kind of giving them hope you know we we show them that there's more to life than just living on the streets and stuff like that uh, being able to you know be on the because we also get food kids on the food truck and uh, we train them with, you know, POS systems, taking orders, interaction with customers. Uh, we even train them on the kitchen. You know, I show them how to cook and, and all that. And I mean, I feel like, like we are making the world a better place. Thank you so much to the amazing people here at the Monkey Business Cafe. You and your family should definitely come and try out this hidden treasure. Let's see what else is happening here in Fullerton. We are at our final place, the Richmond Park, to learn more about the CSUF Center for Healthy Neighborhoods. And I'm here with a very special guest. Egret Nunzi, I am the Community Liaison for the Center for Healthy Neighborhood in our beautiful city of Fullerton. So my first question is, can you tell me about the collaboration with the city of Fullerton and the community engagement here at the center? Absolutely, Brisa. We feel blessed to be here in Fullerton and have the full support of our authorities, our, our city council, our city manager, they came together with us, with the community, in these very hard times to offer us help. 
like at the Fit Fullerton program. The Fit Fullerton program helped not just the business, but the, the community, providing vouchers for families in need. And what we did with the center and with this collaboration was to create uh, this help for our families that were infected with COVID. We went and get the food for them and bring them, you know, to their houses. And that way we keep the people and the family that were infected at home, keep spreading, you know, the virus in our community. And there were so many other, you know, ways they help us with the rent assistance, programs for keep our children occupied, you know, providing art for our families. And we collaborate in that to bring this, you know, like escape for our children from the stress of the parents not having a work or maybe having food insecurity. They came here to help us to, you know, to different food drives in our community. And we are so grateful to our city, all the organizations that this COVID helped us, you know, to work together as a one in our city. Can you tell me a little bit about the CSUF Center for Healthy Neighborhoods? What is its mission, vision for someone that might not know? Yeah, of course. Center for Healthy Neighborhoods is a nonprofit organization located here at Richmond Park. We are a partnership between Cal State Fullerton and also with the city of Fullerton. Our mission is to revitalize neighborhoods, uplift them by providing support, advocacy, and also providing our services at no cost. Can you tell me about the programs that the center has to offer? Of course. So most of our programs are geared towards health and wellness. Um, we do a lot of work with the entire family unit. We work with parents, children, loved ones, and our, per, our, our services are mostly catered uh, to bilingual, bicultural families in Fullerton, even in other um, cities surrounding Fullerton. We work mostly with our children and parents to provide health education. We provide health literacy as well as education through schoolwork, helping them um, through, through our various classworks, through our academic success program, and also promoting um, wellness through our nutrition and physical activity classes. Um, what would you say to someone, you know, the pandemic has been a little scary, that is a little afraid to get out to a park and, you know, of the safety. What would you say to them? I would say that please do, because you know what, our children, they need to regain their childhood. Because they've been, you know, most of our families, they live in one bedroom apartment. And they don't have that space to run, to enjoy. And the park brings that, because that is something that we don't have in home. Imagine how hard it is and how mentally crucial it is for our children, you know, to be stuck, you know, in home, doing school in home not being able to go out, and now that we have this opportunity, of course, do it, please. This is for the well-being of our children. We are working very hard as a community with our city to keep our parks safe, clean for our families to come and enjoy. That's amazing. And, you know, COVID has been difficult for everyone. Can you tell me about the struggles that the center has faced and how you guys have overcome it? Absolutely, Brisa. Now, you know, COVID, it changed everything for not just our center for everybody around the world and we went virtual. We had the struggle of our community. We work mostly with the Latino community here in Fullerton. And you know what, we had to teach our families, not just, you know, the language barrier, the technology barrier. And we have to teach our parents how to communicate in Zoom, giving classes, you know, like a tutorials, how to use Zoom, how to come and get informed in the different, you know, activities that we have, like a food drives. And then we started helping and giving town halls about the vaccine and how beneficial they can be for our community. Because our, our community, which is here, you know, the majority, you know, Latino, we have to get, you know, informed and take informed decisions for our future and the well-being of our families too. And that is so important. Our center too provide with Zumba classes for parents. And we keep and we follow the the CDC guidelines because our parents, you know, they ask us. You know, they are inside their their apartments. They they feel, you know, the stress for mothers especially because if you think about it, Brista, mothers become teachers. You know, take care of the children and and you know the stress. They're not maybe having a job. Their husbands losing their job. That is a struggle that we have a lot, and that's why we encourage our families now. That is. You know that a lot of people are getting vaccinated to come out and enjoy nature because that is proven that help relax our minds. And you talked about promoting wellness. Can you tell me a little bit more about how the center is promoting a healthy lifestyle to the community? 
Yes, to us, it's really important for families to be engaged in their wellness. And we do that through our uh, Cal State Fullerton um, student nursing program. We bring in nursing students to promote health education, to provide presentations on how to manage any chronic illnesses. And um, we also do a lot of work with different partnerships like St. Jude Medical Center, where we're providing um, diabetes management and different just opportunities for families to continue to promote that wellness. We also have um, different educational activities that we do, whether it's through Zumba, physical activity, um, bringing in partnerships that do healthy cooking classes. There's a variety of services that are offered bilingually and at no cost. That is amazing. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. It's been a pleasure as well. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much to the city of Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton, and the Monkey Business Cafe for showing us all that Fullerton has to offer. Make sure you stay tuned for more Hidden Treasures of Orange County as part of our Move More, Eat Better series here on The Insider. I'm Brisa Colon. See you next time.